In this video, we're going to look at iron. And iron uh, is one of the trace minerals. And although it is a trace mineral, it is definitely an important one. Uh, my guess is you've heard of iron before. And I don't mean just, you know, pumping iron. I mean its role in something called anemia, which we'll get to here in a few minutes. Uh, so iron, definitely a key, key mineral. Uh, we have quite a bit of it in the human body, about four grams. Most of that is in the blood in the form of hemoglobin, which carries oxygen and other gases in the blood, or in myoglobin, which is the oxygen storage form in muscle. And so already you can kind of see that iron plays a role in either moving oxygen in the blood or storing it in muscle, and that is very true. It's one of the reasons why you may have heard it previously said that if you know, someone is deficient in iron, they may seem fatigued or weak. Well, it's in part due to its role in oxygen transport in tissues. Uh, so uh, iron is going to play a lot of different roles that we could focus on, but really our big one is transporting oxygen, whether it be as hemoglobin in the blood or myoglobin, uh, how important that is. And that's because, obviously, you know, so many tissues require oxygen to function. We're, you know, normally, we're humans, we're aerobic beings, right? And we're not just simply talking muscle function, we're talking about numerous other tissues and systems as well. Uh, now, the DRI for iron actually does fluctuate quite a bit, more so than most minerals. Uh, for most males, it's roughly about 8 milligrams. However, for when it comes to females, it can be anywhere from 12 to 14 milligrams. Uh, those who are in uh, midst of pregnancy can be even higher than that. So there are definitely fluctuations in the DRI for iron. Um, and as far as f uh, food sources for iron, uh, we're going to get into this a little bit more in our next slide. But generally speaking, and this should make sense, uh, given that hemoglobin right has iron and myoglobin, well, uh, if you consume things that have that, you're probably going to get a lot of iron. Well, not surprisingly, animal-based foods um, and fish as well, oysters, things like that. Uh, but red meat, again, and this may seem you know, kind of gross, I guess, but you are consuming in that hemoglobin. The hemoglobin has iron. And so this is where our um, animal-based sources are really good sources for iron. Uh, now, it doesn't mean that plants don't have iron. They do that's just generally in lesser amounts. There's also, this is where we get an issue with iron that's an important one. Um, when we get into iron, just a little biochemistry of it, uh, we generally have iron in two forms, what are called heme and non-heme forms. Uh, heme forms are what we find in animal-based foods, right, with hemoglobin. Things like the hemoglobin is simply a, uh, an iron and a protein hemoglobin that carries oxygen. And then in plant-based forms, well, in plants, there's, there's not blood. And so we have what's called non-heme iron. Well, why is this important? Uh, these forms are not exactly the same. And um, although they both have iron, that's true, um, the, the way humans, mammals, are able to consume and then absorb these forms is actually quite different. And the absorption of heme iron is far, far greater uh, than it is non-heme iron, non iron in humans. Well, as you can guess, that is greatly going to affect how much iron is available for tissues to use it. Uh, for example, if you're on a plant-based diet, and again, uh, we've said good, and good things about plant-based diets before, but if we're only consuming plant-based forms, non-heme forms of iron, well, we're absorbing very, very little of that. And so um, potentially, well, over the long term, that could cause deficiencies in iron and lead to anemia, which we'll talk about. Now, there are numerous other things that cause anemia, so I want to be clear on that. I'm also not saying if you only eat plants, you'll get anemia. I'm not saying that either. Uh, but there is definitely a correlation between the two, so much so that the DRI for individuals on a plant-based diet is far higher than it is for someone who's not. Uh, so even with heme iron, the absorption of it's not great. Uh, we're able to utilize about a quarter of that in our diet, but that is a really, really key distinction. And so we want to have these heme-based sources of iron 
uh, to really maintain iron levels uh, at a level that they need to be at. Um, and this is one of the challenges when it comes to iron, that not all iron is the same. And so this is where we want to document not just how much iron someone's consuming, but where those sources are coming from. Are they plant-based? Are they animal-based? Uh, and that can be a real, real challenge. Uh, and so when we talk about deficiencies of iron, and a term you've probably heard of before is called anemia. Uh, anemia is simply a condition where we have reduced oxygen transport to tissues uh, that require it. Uh, and there's various clinical values for anemia where we can look at red blood cell count, red blood cell volume, hematocrit, things like that. Now, I want to be clear on this. Um, iron deficiency does cause anemia. That is true. However, not all anemias are caused by iron deficiency. There are numerous other anemias, whether it's related to other nutritional issues like vitamin B12 or non-nutritional issues. Sickle cell anemia is a great example. Aplastic anemia is another one. So I want to be careful with that. You know, there are some anemias that have a nutritional component to it, but some that don't. And so we always want to be careful with that. Having said that, um, there's good evidence, and I think according to the World Health Organization, that roughly one in five individuals on the planet have some form of iron deficiency, which is unbelievably high when you think about it. And one of the reasons is dietary source, right? Another one is supplementing with iron and uh, minimizing iron deficiency, particularly through treatment, through supplements, is a lot easier said than done. Um, you would think that, hey, if someone is deficient in iron, okay, take an iron supplement, you'll be fine in a few days. That's not really how restoring iron stores in the body works. Uh, and unlike other minerals, it actually takes quite a long time to restore iron to normal levels. In fact, in most pharmacological regimens uh, for people who have anemia, it's not uncommon to require them to not just take an oral supplement, but to do IV administration of iron for six months or so, because it takes that long to restore iron well. And a lot of that has to do with how we store iron. Uh, we store iron in the form of ferritin, uh, I won't get so much into the biology of that, but it makes preventing uh, iron deficiencies far more difficult than a lot of other vitamins and minerals that we've talked about. And, and because heme sources are better and because, like, for whatever reason, heme sources might not be readily available, whether it's because of diet choice, whether it's because of... Um, issues geographically with lack of good food resources like we see in famine or civil war, uh, we can see these very, very commonly. And so this is definitely one you want to be aware of, knowing what anemia is, what can cause it, uh, and the role iron plays in that. Um, again, you will see iron uh, actually commonly added to some foods often in the form of uh, ferrous sulfate or others, another ferrous compound. And so when you look at ingredients on food labels, it's not uncommon to see a ferrous something um, in these. Uh, and again, you, you'll, you'll see that in my effort for you to know everything on a nutrition label. That is something that you will definitely occasionally see. Okay, I uh, hope that helps, and we will see you in the next video.